What's up guys? So we're back from the desk of the Teaching Pro and we have found ourselves more hot water on the Live Golf circuit. Um, so as you know, I like to kind of keep you guys uh, in tune with the happenings from that world, but it's a lull in the seasons and I thought maybe now is a good time to kind of pipe in because Roy McIlroy has yet again opened his mouth um, saying that Norman needs to go. Now, is that true? Now, the rumor mill going around is that uh, there might be some interest in the former TaylorMade CEO, Mark King, to take over Liv and remove Norman from the table. Liv Golf has renounced that and said that Norman is the CEO and commissioner and anything else is patently false. But that being said, rumors start, usually tend not to be too far behind, is reality. That being said, <clears throat> Roy McIlroy decided to open his mouth yet again and just crap on Norman. I, for the life of me, don't know what happened, and maybe you guys can comment below and tell me what you think, that has gotten Rory in such an uproar against Norman. I mean, Rory and I are the same age. I didn't grow up in the Norman era when <clears throat> he was the best player on the planet. Like I was being born and barely out of diapers when he was relevant. Um, so the, the premise that he's got all this animosity towards Norman saying that he needs to leave so the adults in the room can have a conversation is kind of crazy. So again, I don't understand why some of these tour players are so hot and so eager to just trash on live. Um, I think it's kind of a poor taste. Honestly, I'm losing a lot of respect for guys like Rory and Justin Thomas with these kind of comments. I think you know you kind of live by that model. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And they should just do their own thing. And, and to that note, Rory and Tiger are now in the throes of starting their own league, uh, Tomorrow Sports, which, mind you, I think is a cool idea. It, it's entertaining to me that you have to be a PJ Tour player to have the to be on a team. So they're talking about three six-man teams playing in a virtual stadium league. The way they have it set up on their you know website and the graphics, I mean, seems cool. I think it's kind of amusing that Rory would trash on Liv not being a real golf tournament because it's 54 holes, but then designs a tournament, I guess you can't really call it a tournament, but a league based around a false premise of a golf tour. I don't know what you would even call it, honestly. Just a comp just com competition. And I kind of look at it as like a bar crew kind of environment. You go rent out a simulator for an hour, drink a bunch of beers, and hoop and holler at your buddies. It's kind of what I think this is going to be. And, you know, is it a new face for golf? Yeah. Is it a fun face for golf? Probably. The fact they have Rory and Tiger combined as the top two seeds on it right now is probably the best thing for it. Um, but that's yet to be determined, and there's a whole lot that has to happen before that can even take shape. But back to the main issue is this whole Norman live. Again, tell me what you think below, but I think there's credit to the Norman part of the equation, but I also think Manahan isn't doing any favors either. Um, and furthering negotiations between Liv and PJ Tour. I know Liv's still trying to work through the Asian Tour market to get the Asian Tour to be their feeder, which it is their feeder tour, but to also be their representation for World Golf Ranking Points. However, that didn't work, so they're out on that front. They're not getting World Golf Ranking Points. They have a 14-event schedule, 14 event schedule coming up next season in 23. So it looks like they'll have enough events for next year, but it's just a matter of <clears throat> will they retroactively get World Golf Ranking points, and if so, how's that going to look uh, as far as the number of points, which we've already broken that down in another video before. However, let's not forget that <clears throat> Live Golf and PJ Tour are going back and forth with counter suits. So you got PJ Tour with an antitrust suit against them. You got <clears throat> PJ Tour suing Live Golf about breach of contracts with PJ Tour players. And so now you're in all this litigation with the Saudi Arabia's, was it Public Investment Fund group that has apparently $500 billion. Uh, that's with a B. So that's a crazy number. And 
you know, that's probably not helping the conversation a lot more than the Norman side of it, this, you know, portion of it. Part of this suit comes from 11 former PJ Tour players, including the following Bryson DeChambeau, Matt Jones, Peter Uline, are plaintiffs in the case, um, including Phil Mickelson. Um, but Phil just recently has asked to be removed from the case, so I don't know what's going on there. But again, this Saudi group apparently manages $620 billion in assets and has reportedly been willing to pump in basically almost $800 million into Liv's inaugural year. I mean, that's just an unfathomable amount of money to go into a tour. So I think the next thing that's going to come from this is how does Live Golf get on television? Do they need to get on television? Do they keep live streaming it off their own website or YouTube? Um, I think you're starting to see more people go that route anyways, kind of getting off the mainstream um, networks and dealing with, I mean, the last event I watched on the tour was the most annoying thing ever because you watch about two swings and then four ads, but the ads are bigger than the swings and that little playing through baloney the PJ Tour is doing just to get more pharmaceutical ads in there. Um, so, you know, the live stream on YouTube for, you know, live are kind of fun because you don't really have to deal with that. So, but I know that's the next big subject is you know, getting a getting a contract with one of these major networks. And so we'll see what that starts to look like too. So definitely an interesting time and definitely interesting with regards to the comments being made by all these tour players as the tours continue to fight back and forth. So, you know, one, I think just it's an interesting concept that if they did replace Norman, I don't know if that still fixed the problem. I think people's biggest issue is still the Saudi money. Then on top of that, you know, Pat Perez fires off against Tiger when he was on Butch Har- uh, Clark, sorry, Claude Harmon's podcast, Son of a Butch, saying that, you know, Tiger coming out saying, what's the incentive is kind of a BS argument because Tiger signed a pretty large Nike contract right out of college that he could have hung up his cleats <clears throat> and not done what Tiger did. So I think, you know, there's a lot of merit in the fact that the the fact that there's guaranteed money doesn't take away the drive to want to be the best and be good. And I, and I think to trash that the guys that are still finishing at the bottom of the pack can make something, it's kind of in poor taste as well. <clears throat> the other last little nugget here is Cam Smith has come out hoping that the, the majors stand above the rest of these PJ tour and other tour issues that are going on between live and everybody else. And that the majors can help bring the peace a little bit and let live golfers play on major sites or in major venues as long as they qualify, I guess. So that way they can still have the best players in the world competing against the best, not some of the best players in the world, not getting a chance to because they don't follow the years of rules and precedent set before them. So, anyways, that's just a little live golf update. It's getting kind of interesting now. And uh, the season is coming up fast upon us. You got about three months, four months till things start to pop off and the 23 season starts to really get going. So, let me know what you guys think. If you live golf, you think it's going to be relevant next year, if it's going to get bigger, smaller. Be kind of curious to hear what you guys have to say. And uh, with that, Coach Matt is out. See you.